Hi, Elaine here. Making collages has never been so easy. One of the best apps for making them on the Mac platform is Fotor, and in this video I'll show you just how easy it is to create customised, elegant and engaging collages. So first thing to do is to run Fotor. And when it runs, you're given this dialog box. And this is because Fotor has three modes. It has an edit mode, and I've done a video on some of the image editing capabilities, and here is a link to that video. The second mode is collaging, that's what we're looking at today. And it has a newly added mode, the batch mode. And that includes dedicated features for file management, including renaming, resizing, converting between file formats. And I'll look at that in a future video. But today it's the collaging mode. So click on there to access that mode. And that takes you into the collaging interface. And within here, let's have a look round. At the top right hand corner, you have a button that says home. And what that does is take you back to the mode selection. So going back into collaging there. Then on the left of the screen, you have the sidebar. Now that's also known as the photo basket. And that's the holding area for your images. In the middle, you have the canvas, that's the working area. And then over on the right hand side, you have the configuration center. And we're going to look at all of those. But starting from the top, we'll have a look at the photo basket. And you have two alternatives for adding images. There is the add button and there's the drag and drop method. So first of all, I'll use the add button and I have a folder full of images here. And what I want to do is attempt to add them all. So I'm selecting the first one, scrolling down and then selecting the last one. Now this will give me a fail message. So clicking open, it will tell me that there is a maximum of 30 photos. So be aware you have a maximum of 30. In that folder, there were 32. What will happen is it will load the first 30 and just ignore the last two. Now I actually do want the last two, but the first two here I can afford to lose. So as I hover over that image, I get a cross in the top left hand corner and I can just click there to remove those two images. And now I have 28 photos, which it tells me down in the lower left hand corner. Now I'd like to add in the other two images. I could go back to my add images dialog or I could just drag and drop them in. So let me show you the alternative, which is dragging and dropping them in. And there is my folder full of images. And it was the last two that didn't work. So there's one of them. So add that one in and the very last one there. And it has added those to the bottom of my photo basket. And then take that back to full screen. And now your images are ready to add to your collage. But before we start adding them, you need to be aware that there are two completely different modes within Fotor. There is the template modes, which is the mode that we're in at the moment, and that has 80 templates. They vary from two images per template in here, right the way up to nine images per template, and they are accessed from that dialogue there. But the second mode is the freestyle mode and you change between modes with the two buttons on the right hand side. So just clicking on freestyle takes you straight through to that mode that removes all of the templates. And what you're left with is a range of options and the ability to drag and drop images anywhere on that canvas. And we'll have a look at that mode shortly. Now you can switch between these modes as many times as you like, even after you've added images to them. The main difference between the two modes is the ability to place images freely in the freestyle mode. It's you there that has complete control over the placement of the images. But just going back into template mode and having a look at the rest of the options. Once you've selected a template, so I'll go for one that holds five images there. The next thing to think about is the ratio. You can select one to one four to three or three, four. And they do change that slightly. So I'm going to go for that one so it fills the screen better. And as I say, you have a whole range of layouts here. If you select all, then you see all of the templates that are available. So just scrolling down through there and there's a lot of them. But I'm going to stick with this one that I've selected. Now, once you've got that far, you can start adding images and build up your collage. So going across to the photo basket and you've got a couple of options. You can drag and drop, but as well as dragging and dropping, you can also double click to add images. Moving across to the photo basket and double clicking there, it adds it to the next available frame. And you can go through the images, double clicking to add those. 
Now, you'll notice as I start doing that, that some of the images in the photo basket now have a tick next to them. And that's indicating that they're already included in the collage. Now, just because they're already in the collage doesn't mean that you can't use them twice. If you like an image that much, you'd like it to appear twice. You can do that just by double clicking it again or dragging and dropping it. But this time I want different images. So I'm going to drag and drop the couple image into that frame on the right and it's going to replace the image that was already there. Now, although I've added that image, it's not really placed perfectly. But with that frame active, which is indicated by the blue border, if I click and drag that image, I can move it around within the frame so I can get a better position on it. I can also change the images between frames. I can swap them. So taking this one in the middle and dragging it up and those two images swap frames. Now, you'll also notice as I go around and I click on each of these images individually, I get a menu appear. And that menu lets me do various things. The first thing at the top is it will zoom the image and is zooming the image within the frame. So if you want to focus on a specific part of that image, you can zoom in a little bit and then move it around within the frame. You also have a rotate left by 45 degree button and a rotate right 45 degree button. You also have two flip options. You can flip horizontally and you can flip vertically. And the final option is to remove that image from the frame. So if I click on there, it disappears. It's still available in the photo basket, though. So if you wanted to add it to another collage in the future or add it to a different frame, you could do that. I'm just going to drag and drop that back into that frame. And then the next thing I'm going to have a look at is the border options over here on the right in the control area. And the border is referring to what is at the moment the white area. And the first option you've got there is to adjust the corners of it. And as I drag that across to the right hand side, it goes between zero and 100. And what that number is referring to is the corner roundness. So dragging it back to the left gives you square corners all the way to the right, very round corners. So I'll leave that around the midpoint. Your second option in the border adjust options is a shadow, whether you have a drop shadow on there. And that raises those images off the background slightly. So I'll leave that set also at the midpoint. And then you have the width setting, which is the width of the border. Now, if you take that down to nothing, you don't see too much of the background. The real power of setting that width down to nothing is shown when you take the shadow and the corners down to nothing as well. And then the images all merge into one. So you can see that these three options give you a huge range of different looks for your image. You also have more options available here. So moving on to the colour option. And now as I hover over these colours, it's changing that background to be one of these colours. If you'd like a different colour, but not any of those particular colours, you can use this spectrum at the bottom. And just moving that eyedropper across there, you can choose any of those thousands of colours available in there. Now, pink works quite nicely for these photos, so I'll leave that set to pink. But you do have another option, which is patterns. And going into there, you have a range of patterns available. Currently, there are 12 patterns to choose from, and it's a simple matter of just clicking on them to make them active. And that one works quite well for a wedding. And new patterns are being added all the time as well. So we've created our first collage. There is no concept in photo of saving a work in progress. What you need to do when you've created a collage is export it. And that option is available on the right. So clicking on there, you get this flyout menu and you have some options to save to computer, send to email and then share on social media. Now I'm going to elect to save this to the computer, which gives you this dialog box. Now, the most important thing up here, once you've named your file, is to select the best file format for your requirements. So if you're posting it somewhere and size is important, then JPEG might be appropriate. But if quality is more important, then I would suggest you go for PNG or bitmap or even TIFF, which is the best quality. So I'll set that to PNG. Then you need to specify where to save it. So clicking on the browse button initially offers you your documents folder, but I'm going to put that on the desktop and click choose to save it there. And your final option in here is to specify a size for the image. Now you will have one extra setting if you specify JPEG. And if you did, you'll be able to choose high, normal and low quality JPEG. And that is now saved and it's saved on my desktop. So just open that up in preview and there is your final image. So 
let's close that down and get photo back and go into the second mode, which is freestyle. Now, what I'm going to do is just go straight into that freestyle mode. I'm not going to use this new option at the bottom. I'm going to go into the freestyle mode to show you that what images you had selected in the template mode carry straight through to the freestyle mode. I also said you could switch between those modes and you can. So switching back takes you back to the template mode. And although it remembered the layout, it has switched the photos around. So the shoe image is now on the right and the couple image is in the middle. So if you did want to just check out freestyle mode and then go back to the template mode, you might have to move the images back into place, but back into freestyle mode. And let's have a look what you've got in here. Well, first of all, you have exactly the same options when it comes to adding images. So if I wanted to add this image, I could drag and drop it onto the canvas and it appears there and I can drag it to move it around. I can also choose another image and just double click to add it and photo will decide where to place the image. And as I've said, you can just move them around. And as I make a selection of each image in here, this adjust pop up will allow me to make specific adjustments just to that one image. So going through the options you have here, you can change the opacity of the image. You can take that right up to 100 so it completely disappears. But I'm going to set that to zero opacity. You can add a drop shadow to it. The difference between adding a drop shadow in this mode and the previous mode, the templates mode, is that you're only applying it to an individual image in freestyle. Everything you do in here with this dialog box is just applying to a single image. You can also specify the width of the border so you can take it very wide or lose the border completely. And you can rotate the image. So just moving that there, you can actually take it all the way around if you want to. And the final option here is referring to the color of the border. And because all of this only applies to an individual image, you could move on to another image and change the border of that. They don't have to match in this view, whereas in the previous view they did. Now, if you decide you don't want a particular image, so this one here, you decide you don't need it, you can click the cross in the top left to remove it. And let's say we do want to keep this one. You've seen there is a rotate option, but it's very difficult to be precise with that. And luckily there is another option when it comes to rotating, which is this handle in the lower right hand corner. Now that is the rotation handle, but it also scales. So it's actually rotate and scale. The fact it rotates is much more obvious than the fact it scales. So clicking and holding it and dragging around, it does rotate, but you can see even as I'm just trying to rotate it, as I pull out, it also scales it. And what it will do is scale that image up to 100% of the image. It won't scale it any further than that, but it will scale it down for you. And then it's literally a case of just dragging and dropping those images into a position that you are happy with. Now, if you're stuck for inspiration, there is a randomize button here. And as you click that, Photo will randomize the placement of those images for you. It also randomizes the rotation and the scale of the images. And just repeatedly clicking that for a range of options. You also need to be aware that in this mode, freestyle mode, you have a stacking order or what's known as a Z order. And that is referring to which of those images is at the top and which ones are pushed to the back and partly covered by the ones that are at the front. And how that is affected is the last one you click is brought to the front. So if I wanted the hand holding ones to be right at the front with the flowers at the back and this one in the middle, I'd have to click them in that order. So this one I want at the back, this one in the middle and this one at the front. Now I'll leave those images set like that so we can see quite a lot of the background. Just to show you, if you want a different color, you have an option here to change the color of the background. So just choose it in exactly the same way as you did previously in the template mode. You also have background options and there are currently three collections of backgrounds. There are ones for birthdays, just showing you those. There's also travel options and there's kids options too. One of these kids ones works quite well for wedding images. So that one there at the top, move it around. You can see the background there. So together, these options provide a whole range of customizations that you can use in freestyle mode. Now, when you're happy with that, again, you go through the export process. So click export. In this case, I'm going to say save to computer. 
I will change the name and add a two on the end of there. It remembers the location. So I'll leave it set to desktop. This time I'll save it as a TIFF and save photo. And then go and have a look at that one. And again, it opens up in preview. So there you have it, creating a collage in photo. So let's have a quick recap of what we've done. You need to choose your photo mode. Photo has three dedicated modes, edit, collage and batch. So choose collage mode. Collage mode has two modes of its own, the template mode and the freestyle mode. Add your source images to the photo basket on the left and then add your selected images to the canvas area. Format as required and export the final collage. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And I always appreciate it when you share it with your friends. If you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.